हम वो नहीं जो उड़ने के लिए मुट्ठी भर आसमान मांगते हैं हम वो हैं जो उस आसमान से भी परे पहुंचने का हुनर जानते हैं नमस्कार मैं सुदेश गुलिया अवर सचिव प्रशिक्षण इकाई केंद्रीय माध्यमिक शिक्षा बोर्ड दिल्ली से आप सब का इस बार में हार्दिक स्वागत करती हूं। आज हम यहाँ सुश्री कल्पना चावला आकाश से परे प्रेरक यात्रा विषय पर एक वेबिनार करने जा रहे हैं लेट एस एम बाक ऑन दिस मीनिंगफुल जर्नी टूगेदर एज वी सेलिब्रेट द लाइफ ऑफ डॉक्टर कल्पना चावला वुमेन हु टच द स्टार्स एंड कंटिन्यूज टू इंस्पायर अस ऑल हमारे साथ मौजूद हैं निदेशक प्रशिक्षण इकाई डॉक्टर रामशंकर जी और संयुक्त सचिव डॉक्टर संदीप जैन जी मुख्य अतिथि तथा वक्ता के रूप में उपस्थित हैं डॉक्टर कन्हैया लाल जी की आईआईटी रुड़की उत्तराखंड में भौतिकी विभाग में प्रोफेसर हैं और यूट्यूब के जरिए हमारे साथ जुड़े हुए हैं केंद्रीय माध्यमिक शिक्षा बोर्ड से संबद्धता प्राप्त विद्यालयों के प्रधानाचार्य प्रमुख शिक्षण और विद्यार्थीगण एवं सीबीएसई के सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस यहाँ आपकी उपस्थिति एक असाधारण व्यक्ति की स्मृति का सम्मान करने में आपकी रुचि और उनकी जीवन यात्रा से सीखने के प्रति आपकी प्रतिबद्धता को दर्शाती है आप सबका इस वेबिनार में स्वागत है अब इस वेबिनार की आवश्यकता और उपयोगिता पर प्रकाश डालने के लिए मैं आमंत्रित करती हूँ निदेशक महोदय प्रशिक्षण इकाई से सर डॉक्टर रामशंकर जी धन्यवाद सुदेश गुलिया जी सर्वप्रथम मैं स्वागत करता हूं और आभार भी व्यक्त करता हूं प्रोफेसर के लिए आप आईआईटी रुड़की में भौतिकी विभाग के प्रोफेसर हैं और आपने हमारे आमंत्रण को स्वीकार किया है इसलिए केंद्रीय माध्यमिक शिक्षा बोर्ड की ओर से आपके प्रति आभार व्यक्त करते हैं साथ ही साथ इस वेबिनार में स्वागत करता हूँ उन सभी प्रिंसिपल्स और टीचर्स से जो उनतीस हजार विद्यालयों के परिवार से आते हैं 26 देशों में हमारी अविस्थिति है हम हमारी प्रेजेंस है केंद्रीय माध्यमिक शिक्षा बोर्ड की ट्रेनिंग यूनिट लगातार प्रयासरत रहती है कि वेबिनार और अन्य कार्यक्रमों के माध्यम से हमारे सी परिवार के जो प्रिंसिपल्स हैं और टीचर्स हैं उनके साथ संवाद स्थापित हो और उनके अनुभवों में जो योगदान देने के लिए आवश्यक तत्व है वो विभिन्न संस्थाओं के विद्वानों को आमंत्रित करके हम उनकी पूर्ति करें जहां तक आज के विषय का प्रश्न है बेहद रोचक भी है और हमारे लिए एक सब का विषय भी है कल्पना चावला जी का जीवन अपने आप में एक प्रेरणा है आपने भारत से लेके अमेरिका तक और अमेरिका से अंतरिक्ष तक का जो सफर तय किया है वो अपने आप में हजारों आंखों पर रोशनी देने के लिए पर्याप्त है हमारे विद्यालयों में बड़ी संख्या में जो विद्यार्थी अध्ययनरत हैं, उनके लिए जो हमारे अध्यापक हैं, उनके बीच ये बात आज जाएगी कि एक कल्पना चावला ने किस तरह से अपने जीवन को गढ़ा और दुनिया में एक चाहे वो वर्ष के केंद्रीय माध्यमिक शिक्षा बोर्ड का लगातार प्रयास रहता है कि राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति दो हजार बीस में जो प्रावधान है और हमें दिखाया गया है उसके ऊपर सभी विद्यालय परिवार हमारे सभी प्रधानाचार्य हमारे शिक्षकगण हमारे विद्यार्थी हमारे अभिभावक एक यात्रा के सहयात्री बने सहगामी बने और एक साथ मिलकर इस विजन को उस एनपी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी में देखा गया है उसको साकार करने के लिए कार्यरत जिस समय इस वेबिनार की चर्चा हो रही थी तो प्रोफेसर के एल यादव जी से मेरी बात हो रही थी तो मैंने आपसे निवेदन किया था कि सर इस दौरान चूंकि आपका इतना विशद अनुभव है और आप विशेषज्ञ इस क्षेत्र के माने जाते हैं तो उन सब चीजों का तो लाभ हमारे सीबीएसई परिवार को मिलेगा ही साथ ही साथ मैंने निवेदन किया कि आप हमारे अध्यापकों और प्रधानाचार्य को इस विषय में भी अवगत कराए कि इस दिशा में जैसे किसी व्यक्ति की आकांक्षा है कि एरोनॉटिकल इंजीनियरिंग में या एरो स्पेस में किस तरह से वो अपनी यात्रा आरम्भ कर सकते हैं किस तरह से वो एक अच्छा करियर का मार्ग प्रशस्त कर सकते हैं उस पर भी चूंकि समयावधि का थोड़ा प्रकाश अवश्य मैं आशा करता हूँ 
परिवार न केवल लाभान्वित होगा साथ ही साथ वो लाभ हमारे स्टूडेंट्स हमारे बच्चों तक हमारे अन्य स्टेक होल्डर्स तक पहुंचेगा एक बार पुनः मुख्य अतिथि प्रोफेसर के यादव जी का साथ ही साथ सीबीएसई की ट्रेनिंग यूनिट में सुरेश गुलिया जी का और हमारे सभी सत्ता सेंटर ऑफ एक्सपेंस के हेड्स और वहां के स्टाफ के प्रति भी आभार ज्यादा समय न लेते हो मैं सुरेश गुलिया जी से आग्रह करूंगा कल कल की कार्यवाही आगे बढ़े बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद वृद्ध शब्दों के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सर नाउ बिफोर आई इनवाइट डॉक्टर कन्हैया लाल यादव जी आई वुड लाइक टू गिव अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ यू सर प्रोफेसर के एल यादव जी इज फ्रॉम स्मार्ट मटेरियल्स रिसर्च रेगुलेटरी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स आईआईटी रुड़की उत्तराखंड इंडिया डॉक्टर के एल यादव जी is currently professor and former head of physics department indian institute of technology rudki sir has received his bsc msc and phd degree in physics from indian institute of technology khadakpur in 1987 and 1989 and 1994 respectively in 2001 sir was awarded the boys scout fellowship at materials research institute penn state university usa In addition, sir has obtained JSPS fellowship at National Institute of Material Science, Tsukuba, Japan, in 2010, and Royal Society of Edinburgh fellowship to work at University of Glasgow, Start Scotland, in 2014. In his academic career, sir has published more than 50 research papers in SCI journals with 6183 citations, 45 H index. And 138 item index, highest impact factor of journal published is 26.94. That is materials today. In his career, he has guided 17 PhD, 30 MTech, and 22 MSc dissertations. Sir is also an author of one contributed chapter in a book of international significance in the field of material science and technology. sir your major research interests are functional nanomaterials and biomaterials your current research work is focused on designing and development of perskite materials for energy storage water remediation solar cells and radar absorbing absorbing materials electrodes for batteries and energy generation by hydro pixels your submission won the winner of materials today cover competition in the year 2016 one of your published research paper on multiforex has received the highest citation of 270 you have successfully undertaken seven sponsored projects now you have been the convener of nine short term courses of one week on nano science and nanotechnology under the quality improvement program sponsored by ICT by AICTE professor yadav you have the work experience of both industry Industrial and research organizations owe past experience in teaching, research, and industrial experience, amounting to a total of thirty years. Sir, you strongly advocate the application of research methodology and practical applications in the pedagogy. Sir has been listed consecutively for three years, two thousand twenty, two thousand twenty one, and two thousand twenty two in the top two hundred scientists published by scientists. from stanford university usa over to you sir thank you ms suresh gulia under secretary cbse training for giving a nice uh, introduction of mine a uh, very a very good evening to all of the viewers of cbse family and at the beginning i want to thank dr ram shankar director training Dr. Sudesh, uh, Mrs. Sudesh Gulia, and Dr. Sandeep Kumar Jain, Joint Secretary, for giving me this opportunity to give my uh, give a talk a webinar on Ms. Kalpana, Dr. Kalpana Chawla. So uh, I would like to start to share my slides.
I hope uh, this is, uh, I am audible and uh, slides are visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is the IIT Roorkee academic, uh, not the academic, initially it was academic block, the top view, now it's the administrative block. Myself, uh, as Professor Sud uh, Ms. Sudesh has already given my introduction, that I am uh, working. My lab is Smart Materials Laboratory, Department of Physics, IIT Roorkee. So on the left, left uh, right top, you see uh, this is the Punjab Engineering College from where uh, this uh, photograph I have taken. Uh, the, these are the helicopters and the aeroplane which is kept there, and one engine also in the building. So this is the. <clears throat> Next photograph is the Punjab Engineering College guest house. And this is, I have taken on 28th May 2023, just two months back. And this was my first visit to Punjab Engineering College to take PhD Viva there. And I was not aware that within two months, uh, Dr. Ram Sankar will contact me and ask me to give talk on uh, Ms. Alpna Chawla. And this is just a coincidence. and. Dr. Ram, in the beginning, uh, first talk which I had with him, he informed me just one back that I was thinking it will be on uh, space mission and in Indian Indian scenario. But in the next second meeting, I came to know that the topic is uh, Ms. Kalpana Chawla, Kalpana Separe. So that this topic made me a little bit uh, gave me it's, it is easier also at the same time it's difficult also because all of us know in india or worldwide Ms. Kalpana Chalva is remembered for the last 20 years so let's uh, so i i think most of the people viewer of this program uh, will be knowing about her but uh, since i have been given this uh, given this opportunity to speak something on Ms. Kalpana Chawla, i start my uh, webinar from this point. So, Dr. Kalpana Chawla inspiring journey beyond the sky. As you see, her smiling face. She was always uh, smiling and doing her work uh, confidently. And so, she was a starry-eyed girl, girl called Monto. So, this Monto name is the beginning. At the beginning name, as we all know, he at the beginning means when the child is born. So we just call uh, her, uh, him or her by some name. And when they go to school that time, the name is decided. So here also, or, but nowadays it is, I think uh, we have to get registered the name of the child in the municipality. So the name is decided very, very shortly, but that can be changed later on. But here the starry girl was called Monto. And she is the role model for countless Countless Indian women and Kalp it's not Indian women, it's for the all Indian students and everyone. Kalpana was an ordinary girl from Karnal whose lofty dreams and indomitable courage took her to space. So, originally from the Multan district of West Punjab, means her family were from Multan district, from the, now it's in Pakistan. Monto's parents came to Karnal in Haryana during the partition. So as we know during the partition, what things have happened and how people have come back to this side and from here they went to the other side. So they had uh, his, her father, Banarsilal Chawla, took up several petty jobs working as a street hawker, a cloth seller, and even a metal fabricator to provide his, for his family in the beginning. He eventually set up a tire manufacturing business while Monto's mother, Sanyogita, managed the household. So as this is, we know that uh, father is the bread earner and the ladies are mostly the house uh, maker nowadays. And as you see the Karnal district of today's photograph I have taken. So this I wanted to mention that uh, Kalpana Chawla's early uh, brought up was not so in a high five setup. So let's go further. So this is the photograph of Kalpana Chawla at the beginning, at when she was a little child. 
Born on 17th March 1962, Monto grew up in an environment where hard work was encouraged. So this hard work, as we know, Punjab and Haryana and those sides, people are very hard working. The youngest of the four siblings, Monto, was a precious, precocious child. Precocious means she was a very intelligent child and her name is Monto. I will come to Kalpana a little bit later. So till now, you have... I am now giving the name Monto. So her natural curiosity, independent nature and delight in discovering how things worked were encouraged by her mother. So this how things work that I have uh, darkened means given a different color. So this is for the things means the children should know always how things work, whatever things they see around that should they should be curious how it is done is how it works and how uh, why it works like that what are the things required for making those things so that that should be there so this was natural curiosity it comes in the children's but uh, also follow that curiosity her mother sangeeta was a supportive and liberal woman who ensured that all her daughters went to school at a time so Kalpana was the youngest child. She has two sisters and one brother. The total four siblings were there. So when education was considered an unnecessary luxury for the girls, this is in the years 60s and 70s we are talking about. So that time, women were or girl child were very rarely go, going, going to school or allowed to go. But her mother was supportive and liberal. She ensured that all her daughters went to the school. So now coming to the Kalpana, Kalpana means, as we know, it is uh, imagination. So we see on the left uh, the photographs in from the school and then uh, giving lecture. This is from the Punjab Engineering College. So how this name Kalpana came? She was a confident, love, lively girl, Monto even selected her own name. So this name Kalpana was selected by her, herself. So it so happened that Kalpana had not been formally named at a proper ceremony and was called by her nickname Monto at home. As we know, I have told previously also. So in Indian or every family, they have a some ceremony and then Namkaran ceremony, they do it or give the name to a child. So this was not done at the time and she was having the name Monto itself. So during her admission to nearby school that Tagore Balniketan, the principal asked the student's name. And Kalpana's aunt replied that uh, they had three names in mind, Kalpana, Jyotsna, and Sunaina. And but they had not had not decided yet which name to keep. So the principal uh, asked the little girl which name she liked best. And she replied Kalpana because it means imagination. So in this way, we say that the, the name Kalpana was chosen by the herself, Monto. Just like the name she chose Kalpana was a highly creative and imaginative child. On sultry summer days, while her family slept on the roof of their small house, the little girl would stay awake for hours to watch the twinkling pink stars in the night sky. So nowadays, uh, due to the atmosphere pollution and we are in the cities, at least we are not able to see, unless it, it rains, uh, we see, do not see the stars. Or someday, uh, if, if the sky is clear, we can see. But if you go to villages, you can surely see the twinkling stars in the. And she was in village near Karnal, so she could see. And during that period also, there was no such pollution that time. So such was her fascination with stars that once her classmates built a geographical map of India on the floor of their classroom and she covered the ceiling completely with stars, little sparkling dots on the class uh, with uh, black chart papers. Then how did she is linked to the aerospace engineering? So as we as see here a glider, so so everything we know, uh, I think in the destiny, something is connected uh, to your uh, how we will work in future where you are going. So this was another thing that caught Kalpana's fancy was uh, that aeroplanes. So back then, 
Karnal was one of the few Indian towns with a flying club called Karnal Aviation Club, which was started in 1967. Kalpana was born in 1962 and it was started near uh, her village, Miss Few, uh, in 1967. That was also a significant contribution that this aviation club was there. So as her house was just a few kilometers away from the club, she would often climb up to the roof and watch them go roaring over the head, waving her hand at the pilot if the plane flew over the house. So this we can see presently also in the villages or some city also, if you see some low flying flight or it is going or a helicopter is going, people come out and are interested in seeing the flights. So that is the natural thing so which it was also in Kalpana. So in an interview she gave before the Columbia, before the Columbia mission, that was the last, Kalpana recalled how she and her brother would be on their bicycles trying to see where the planes were headed. So they would take on, go on the bicycle and see where this is landing, so it is, because it was a few kilometers away from their house. So she said, we would ask my dad if we could get ride in one of those planes. And this is also a uh, boon to her that his father, her father got uh, a ride on the pushpak and a glider. So she says, I think that's a really my closest link to the aerospace engineering from the, this Karnal Aviation Club, which was set up in 1967 there. And also growing up, uh, we knew, so this is uh, as told by Kalpana before the Columbia mission. We knew JRD Tata who flew some of the first male flights in India. So as we see here, the initially these flights were there and the flight, uh, this first mail, that is the letters which were by air mail were going. Nowadays all the letters are going mostly if it is a very fast service, they send it by plane. So that time first mail flights, uh, we had a different type of envelopes also. And this is the Air India International, that is Indian postage, uh, which was started on 8th June 1948. So this also inspired Kalpana for seeing this aeroplane and just knowing what this person has done during those years definitely captivated my imagination, as she said. Now this imagination beyond the glass ceiling. So Kalpana was uh, good at sports also. And she was a black belt in karate at during at that time. So in school, while her friends do mountains, forest, and rivers on being asked to draw scenery, but Kalpana would draw colorful aeroplanes flying amidst clouds. So she was fascinated by aeroplanes. And she also loved making aeroplane models in craft classes. So I remember these craft classes as I am also I have studied from Kendri Vidyalaya from class three to class 12. And these craft classes are very useful for us or the children. They learn many things which are not taught outside, but these craft classes are important. I think still it might be continuing in the CBSC. So one of the Kalpana school teachers remembers that question, the inquisitive and sensitive about the sensitive girl. See, once narrated that how can people be divided into classes, sects, and religions when they all look alike from the sky? So this came when I, we know that we, we have uh, in history and other courses when it is taught about the uh, sects and religions. She asked well, how it can be when they look alike from the sky. So she was hardworking and focused. She was a good student who enjoyed subjects like English, Hindi, and geography. However, her favorite subject was science, other than dancing and cycling, running, and playing badminton. So she was all all rounder. In, from this, uh, we see that she was an all rounder in all the fields. So now coming to the concept of null set, I think this is the main point from which uh, we can relate. Uh, what is uh, what was in his testing in her testing? So after her class ten board examination, she got admission in a DAV college for higher studies. It was here that interesting incident took place about this null set. 
So the null set we know the empty set in algebra. So during a mathematics class, Talpna's teacher was explaining the concept of a null set, empty set in algebra. So as we know, um, if you give an example to children while teaching, so we also hear while teaching, I am experimentally so always try to give an example or daily uh, like example so people, uh, students can understand better. So she has also given an example during that about the null set. So, which was very remarkable in her life. So, to give an example, she said the teacher, a set of Indian women astronauts at that time. So, which was the classic example of null set as still that no Indian woman had become an astronaut. So, they were teaching the null set. The example was said to be a set of Indian women astronauts at that time. So, so this is around, I think, so 62. She was born in class 10. Then uh, I think this is uh, around 76 or 78 between that period. So to everybody's surprise, Kalpana quipped, who knows, ma'am, one day this set may not be the end, may not be empty. So up to that time, there was no Indian woman astronauts, but Kalpana said, knows, who knows one day this set uh, not be empty. But at that time, no one in the classroom could imagine, let alone know, alone know that a girl who had spoken these lines would herself go to take over the space. So she is the first Indian woman who became, uh, went to the space or became the astronaut. So give, I would like to give example here also. So as it was mentioned, by her teacher about the null set. So this is, if you see, this is the IIT Kharagpur, the uh, oldest uh, IIT set up, first IIT in, set up in, started in 1951. From this building, this is the old building built during the British period, which was uh, initially classes started here. And later on, this new building was made. So this is the two buildings where I have done, as mentioned by uh, Ms. Sudesh Gulia. So I had my PhD, MSc and PhD from this place. Actually, I am born and bottom from IIT Kharagpur itself. And presently there are 23 IITs. So what I want to say about the null set is there. So now it's almost uh, from 51 to 72 years past. There is no woman director and, but this null set was till June, 2023, at 2023. Because uh, Preeti Aglaham to become the first woman director of IIT said to lead IIT Janjaveer. So this is the IIT Madras Janjaveer camp campus, which is the first offshore campus of the Indian Institute of Technology, has also become the first ever IIT to have an woman director. Professor Preeti Aglaham in IIT Madras alumni has been appointed this year, this month itself, July 5th, 2023 as the director in charge of the Janjavir campus, that is the Tanzanian island city of Janjavir. This is in Africa. Reacting to the development, Professor Preeti Aglaham expressed that becoming the first ever woman director of IIT is such a big honor. So we can see Preeti Aglaham, first ever woman director of IIT. So this null set has been also broken this month itself of a woman director of an IIT. So this uh, determined to become a flight engineer. So this caption I put, so she was, Kalpana was very much determined to become uh, a flight engineer. So after completing her class 12 board exams with flying colors, Kalpana decided to pursue her dream of an engineering career. So her father was not in favor of Kalpana doing engineering as he believed that it was not a suitable career option for girls. And as it is mentioned during those pre 70s, uh, late 70s, so girls, and normally all the parents don't want their girl, daughters to go anyhow for higher studies or long distance for higher studies. So this was the case with her family also. So he advised her to become a doctor or a school teacher. 
but Kalpana was determined to become a flight engineer and for that an engineering degree was an essential. So Kalpana had her mother's unconditional support. As we know in a family, father and mother, at least one of the family member, either father or mother, is always in support of the children. So here in this case, Kalpana's mother, and mostly 95% times the mother is always with the children's side, take the side. Here, Kalpana's mother unconditional support was there. And her father finally gave in when he realized that Kalpana has meant a uh, half month and was uh, seriously thinking of going to become an engineer. So Kalpana left for Chandigarh where she took admission in Punjab Engineering College and which is at only 130 kilometers from Karnal railway station. So, so this distance was also not too far away. Uh, nowadays, we are sending children to very far away distances, but that time, so this Punjabi Jing College, which is only 130 kilometers from Karna Railway Station. So during now, so this was the first hurdle she could uh, pass from the parents or basically father who wanted her to become a school teacher or a doctor. But due to the support of unconditional support of the mother, she could make up her mind and reach Chandigarh. So during counseling, as we know, for diff during admissions, we have counselors or counselors to which branch you should take that was there. For the selection of various engineering courses, she chose aeronautical engineer and the only girl to do so during that. So this branch aeronautical engineering, which was in Punjab Engineering College. So that was uh, only, she was not the only girl to choose this topic, uh, this branch. So the count Counselors tried their best to deceive her from joining aeronautical engineering as it had limited job opportunities in the country, but Kalpana refused to budge. So, as we know today, also, if you are after 12th, you are getting in IITs also which uh, branch you want to take computer science or artificial intelligence or designing. Many branches are there. So, we see which. Uh, which is job market is better, so that way we decide. So this was also the same case, but Kalpana refused to budge. So actually there were seven girls only, and the other six girls were to choose other uh, branches, but Kalpana refused to go to other branches and she uh, chose to join the aeronautical engineering. So when they asked her what was her second option, she replied that she had not. So that was the only option and she wanted to do the aeronautical engineering. So that was the determination to become a flight engineer. So this is the building uh, aerospace engineering department, which was 1962. So as we see the, it is the coincidentally the birth year of Monto. So Monto was born in 1962 and that time aerospace engineering department was opened in Punjab Engineering College. But the Punjab Engineering College is nine, uh, was started in 1921, that is in Lahore that time and Punjab University also. So, so after partition, Punjab Engineering College again I was shifted temporarily at I, this University of Roorkee. So recently during my visit to Punjab Engineering College, I came to know that uh, for a brief period, Punjab Engineering College was run, running from University of Roorkee itself. So there is a great connection in this too. And this was again uh, built up in 1962 in Chandigarh. And this is the coincidentally birth of the moon. So in college, Kalpana showed dedication, total dedication to her subjects because she enjoyed what she was doing. So this, you know, means if they are not forcing the child to take any other different course other than her, her or his liking, then they enjoy it. So presently also we should always try that what is the choice of the student and he or she should take that, that course itself. So in fact, she was always dissatisfied with her performance and felt she could have done better. As there are no girls hostel initially, she stayed in Mata Gujri Hall in the Punjab University campus, which was just beside the Punjab Engineering College. 
So in fact, she changed several hostels as she found the hostel environment very noisy and distracting for studies. So ultimately, she let us say lived alone in one room above a garage in a bungalow. There. So this is Kalpana Chawla during her days at Punjab Engineering College in Chandigarh. So now this heading, I am going to fly. So this is about uh, means when you ask somebody even now what you want to become or what you want to do after your studies. So that was our answer. I am going to fly. So Kalpana broke all broke up all traditions and followed her dreams. So as we know, so she has been uh, struggling in the uh, family of Miss C was determined to go engineering and uh, she passed all the hurdles from the family side and from the counselors and joined aeronautical engineering and to fulfill her dreams. So Kalpana was always kept her herself informed of developments in the world of aviation. She collected books and magazines on the subject and read them from cover to cover. Kalpana also became the Joint Secretary of Aero and Astro Club of the college. Under this auspices, she arranged many seminars, lectures, and the role, and uh, such as the role of women in society, the political scenario, and subcontinent, etc. She organized. So always forthright in uh, her manners and ready to take a stand on important issues, Kalpana on the respect of her classmates. So if ever the question of a future career was discussed, she would always point to the sky and say, I am going to fly. So this way, Miss she was so determined that she wanted to go become astronaut itself. So she was determined to become a flight engineer and nothing on the earth could convince her to choose another stream. So always enthusiastic about working on new projects, she surprised her professors and seniors by presenting a paper on time lapse in space. So this is a very tough topic that dealt with Albert Einstein's theories of relativity at the college annual conference in her first year itself. So in 1982, Kalpana secured the third position in the class when she passed the B.Sc. engineering degree. By virtue of uh, by virtue of being the only woman candidate, she also became the first woman aeronautical engineer of the college. So despite all the hurdles in the path, she managed to stick to her first love, and that was the fully uh, qualified to design aeroplanes. So her brilliance in studies and participation in various extracurricular activities eventually helped her in selection of to an American university. So as we know, uh, even now, at that time was also there when you apply for a uh, broad university, particularly in European and America and America. So they, apart from their academic, they see what are the extracurricular activities. And as we have come through the slides, we have seen she was very much active in all the extracurricular activities. So which helped her um, to get admission in American University. So this was, however, just the first step to much greater heights that she would achieve in the year ahead. So she ultimately she landed in the United States, but the, here also there is some thing uh, hurdle was there. So in 82, she moved to the United States for further studies, despite her family's, especially her father's disapproval, where she earned the master's degree at the University of Texas and doctorate at the University of Colorado in 1988. So she became Dr. Kalpana Chawla in 1988. So here it's that <clears throat> she wanted, she got admission in uh, United States. University of Texas, but you see what uh, the father's approval was not uh, available that time or the family approval. The mother and the, 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 her, her brother, they were uh, in support of her. And during that period also it uh, happened that father was out for his uh, business work out of station. And so uh, during that time, it was so difficult to get in contact. 
So she, during that period, she started working as a lecturer in Punjab Engineering College itself before going to America. So when his, her father returned, she came to know from others that uh, he, she has got admission, but she is not being allowed to go. So the father gave in and then he arranged for her uh, visa and tickets to go there within a short period. But when she went, that, that flight was also can, cancelled. And then she wrote to the uh, university for a late admission. So she was allowed for the late admission and ultimately she could join the university uh, in a late admission process. And when she, uh, that means she, she went to, 19, to the University of Texas in 1982. See, in 1983, meanwhile, she got married to a Frenchman, Jean Perry Harrison, and become a naturalized citizen of the United States. For the first few years, her family did not talk to her. However, once she joined the space program, anyone, everyone was proud and elated. So this is a normal case in every family. So if you are not happy with child's uh, you are unhappy, but when uh, goes uh, to a big, going to do a big work, or she got admission there, in the she wanted to become a space join the space program so the family was proud and elated so during this period also means few years uh, kalpana did not lose heart and she uh, proceeded further to join this program so this is kalpana chawla with her husband jain perry harishan so she learned how to fly a plane from her husband Kalpana was licensed to fly single and multi-engine land aeroplanes, single engine seaplanes, and was also certified flight instructor during this period she has learned. So in 1988, Kalpana completed her doctorate in aerospace engineering from the University of Colorado at Boulder. The same year, Dr. Kalpana began working at NASA's Ames Research Center working on power lift computational fluid dynamics. So now coming to the Golden Girl uh, gave youth in India a chance to dream. So despite her busy schedule, she kept in touch with her school and college in India. And he made, uh, he, she made efforts so that every year two students from Tagore Bal Niketan were given the opportunity to visit NASA since 1988. Uh, 1998. So this is still continuing. The students would stay with their with Kalpana Didi as this thought, who would make Indian meals especially for them. And since 1998, as many as 36 students have attended this camp. But uh, now for the last three years, one student is being sent there through an interview system for 15 day long summer session of the International Summer Space School Foundation at NASA. So this was Due to the effort of the golden girl, Dr. Kalpana Chawla, uh, so that uh, which gave youth in India have the dream fulfilled by visiting NASA and attending the seminar at the summer school. So this is the first space mission STS-87. So STS mission specialist she was the mission specialist Kalpana Chawla ships and had launched entry suit in operations and checkout building there just before uh, going to the. So this type of suit they are wearing just uh, when they are going up in the sky and while landing. In between they remove these space suits. So for this first mission, uh, 4000 means for joining this NASA's astronaut program. Actually, 4,000 people applied to NASA's astronaut program in 1994, but only 20 were selected and Dr. Kalpana was one of them. So that means how uh, her caliber was there and the sincerity and the, all the uh, experience she had. So Dr. Kalpana Chawla reported to the Johnson Space Center in March 95 as an astronaut candidate in the 15th group of astronauts. And so in nine, November 96, he was assigned as a mission specialist and 
prime robotic arm operator on space shuttle, which was there from uh, November 19 to December 5, 1997. So this prime robotic arm operator, she was the specialist uh, assigned the work as a prime robotic arm operator. So during this first mission also, the so this you can see, uh, she is assisted with her ascent and re-entry flight suit in white room at launch pad by in NASA. So this is called the white room actually. So in, we have seen the green room, so this is the white room. So on November 1997, when the Space Shuttle Columbia flight flew to space, along with six astronaut, astronaut Dr. Kalpana Chawla became the first Indian origin person to fly in an American space shuttle. And she joined the crew as a mission specialist and prime robotic arm operator. So this was the first operation we started, uh, first mission, STS-87 from November 1997. And this is the crew member, which they, all six crew members are there. So as we see from the crew members, the uh, photograph you can see, so they are on the spacecraft, they are on the low orbit or uh, low earth orbit there. They are not wearing the space suits, they are coming normal dresses. And you can see there are people from different countries actually. So this space missions, different countries participate and you have to have a teamwork uh, nature. So as we know, when you write a recommendation for a student or somebody, so we have to write about how is the teamwork, how whether they, the student can work in a team or not. So those things are uh, can be seen during the project when you give a student's project in a team, so that we can say whether the students are able to cope up with the team or not. So this type of recommendations are very important for um, means when they have to go further and work in a team. This applies for in a normal research lab. So in my lab, there are 10 research scholars are working. So if they are not able to work in a group, then further, uh, so while giving recommendations, it will be reflected. So this mission, first mission was not without a mishaps. So we know the second mission, that was the last mission, first, uh, the second and the last mission of Dr. Kalman Chawla. So this first mission was, all, was also not without mass mishaps, as she could not retrieve the 3,000 pounds Spartan satellite, which spun away after the shuttle released it, following which two astronauts had to go out on a spacewalk three days later to retrieve it. Actually, this Spartan satellite was connected to a robotic arm for which says, Dr. Kalpana Chawla, Chawla was given the work. And uh, the satellite was a free flying platform designed to study the solar corona, which is the countermost, outermost layer of the sun's atmosphere. So it carried instruments to observe the sun and the study its behavior, particularly focusing on its outer layers, magnetic fields and solar wind. So this, uh, low earth orbit satellites are or space stations are made where this many types of experiments are being done. So this satellite was it was there to magnet study the magnetic fields and the solar wind. So according to Kalpana, the mistake shook her confidence and she feared her space career was over. But however her seniors encouraged her for her efforts so a five month NASA investigation blamed the error on the flight crew and the ground control. So that way she was not responsible for the whole uh, this incident. So now we see uh, uh, Rakesh, Mr. Rakesh Sharma here. So the Dr. Kalpana Chawla was the second person from India to fly into space after the cosmonaut Rakesh uh, Sarma, who went into space in 1984 in a Soviet spacecraft. So here, if you observe this word cosmonaut, and we are using astronaut for Kalpana Chawla. So you, most of you might be knowing in America, they know 
they called the astronauts and in Soviet, they call it uh, cosmonauts who are going in the space there. So this is the cosmonaut and he was the first person from India to fly a, as a astronaut or go into the outer space. See, the, he is the first male person and she is the first Indian American uh, lady. So now coming to the second mission, the tragic mission. So Kalpana Chawla with the crew of STS-107. Earlier was STS-87, now this is the STS-107. So she is in the middle. Now this, in this team, there are seven people. So after her first space mission, Kalpana Chawla became the part of the crew of the STS-107 in 2001. And on January 16, 2003, the ill-fated Space Shuttle Columbia returned to space where the crew performed nearly 80 experiments. So this crew was appointed in 2001 and ultimately in 2003, this January 16, this Space Shuttle went to the space. So during this period, uh, this spacecraft had, had undergone many uh, work repairing works, there was problems in that that was being repaired. So on fe February 1st, as we know, this was the last date of, uh, on which we see was alive. The STS-107 mission ended abruptly when the space shuttle Columbia and its crew, including uh, these persons, perished while re-entering the atmosphere of the Earth. So reportedly the main cause of the incident was a piece of foam insulation that broke off from the space shuttle's external tank and struck the port of wing of the orbiter during its launch due to which hot atmospheric gases, <coughs> gases penetrated and destroyed the internal wing structure during the shuttle's re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere in February. Uh, to one, 2003. So as we know, uh, this flight uh, means uh, when the spacecrafts go uh, into the sky, uh, the space, uh, it uh, encounters lot in the Earth's atmosphere. There is gravitational pull. Along with there, in the atmosphere, a lot of friction is due to the particles present there. And due to this high speed and the temperature rises very high and that's why uh, it may go around up to 1400-1500 uh, degree. So that's why for this surface, outer surface is coated with ceramic tiles or ceramic coating is being done which can withstand. So there is reinforced carbon-carbon coating is being done on the surface of the spacecraft which can withstand temperature around 14 to 1500 or 1600 or more than that also. So, but uh, during this space flight, so this is a piece of foam insulation that broke up the space shuttle's external tank and struck the port of wing of the, the, the left wing, which was hot atmospheric. And what happened during that uh, mission itself, uh, when the second or third day, the crew you saw the video or the photographs taken during the flight, they could see something breaking up and striking the uh, this wing. But uh, they so they called up mission, the space missions, uh, going mission people. So, so I will go into detail a little bit here. So on January 16, this NASA launched the Columbia Space Shuttle with a crew of seven people in the low Earth orbit. So this low Earth orbit is around 160 to 2000 kilometers from the Earth surface. And this orbit is a vital region for ex space exploration, satellite deployment, deployment, various scientific and commercial activities in space. And it continues to be a focus for space agencies and private companies for a wide range of missions and applications. So 82 seconds after the launch, a piece of foam broke off a part of attaching the fuel tank to the shuttle and collided with the shuttle's left wing. So NASA engineers were concerned whether the collision could have damaged a portion of the wing that protects the shuttle from the heat generated when it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere 
because while re-entering also it will encounter the atmosphere and due to the friction, a lot of heat will be generated. So they called up the engineers at Boeing to assess the threat. So while the space shuttle and Crew 7 had reached the low of the orbit of the science mission for the science mission. So at the base station, people were, were worried about this uh, about the mission, but the people in the spacecraft, the Kalpana Chawla and the team were doing the uh, experiments there. They had completed almost 80 experiments there, but they were not told anything about this uh, fault which was which happened during the uh, going to the space. So the Boeing team prepared a PowerPoint presentation to communicate what its members had found. The slide that presented the risk that faced NASA if it allowed the Columbia shuttle to re-enter Earth's atmosphere looked like. So this is the slide which they have uh, made and given to the team. So if you see this slide, there are a lot of uh, ambiguities and some words are meaning differently in different lines. So from this, uh, so their flight condition is significantly outside of test database and they could did not give any uh, conclude, uh, concluding remark that whether it's safe or not. So the team, the NASA team concluded at the end of the Boeing presentation that Columbia could be allowed to re-enter without endangering its crew. But uh, so on the designated date, February 1, Columbia began its earthward descent, but less than half an hour before the shuttle was scheduled to land mission control, lost contact with the sensor radars on the shuttle and subsequently with the crew. So this happens whenever there, it enters, uh, I think from uh, 16 to uh, around 12 minutes are the time is there in between when they lose the contact with the base station because the lot of ions which are present in the atmosphere which covers the space shuttle and that uh, uh, stops any communication during or this is the case for any uh, uh, all the uh, flights but just four minutes before its landing reports started coming in before from people in around Dallas that large object could be seen disintegrated in the sky and this is the uh, this type of scene was there and they seen it disintegrated and the people who <clears throat> at the base station could see the mission control center and uh, all seven crew members were confirmed killed including Dr. Kalpana Chawla here. So, but uh, as I can say this uh, uh, the team, the NASA team concluded at the end of the Boeing project that uh, could be allowed to re-enter without endangering its crew. crew. So, but they could have saved and uh, without taking a chance. So they had a taken a chance that uh, uh, it may not happen that while entering a lot of heat will be produced because uh, next month, March itself, 2003, Atlantis, one another spacecraft was going to be launched. And <clears throat> so if they could have wanted uh, strongly to save the team or they could have um, taken a good decision that they could have been taken away from this Columbia and put them in this space Atlantis and brought them down because the people, uh, this, this Columbia mission, they had fuel and everything till 15th uh, February and they were coming on 1st uh, February. So and then the Atlantis, Atlantis flight, which was supposed to be the going for mission on 1st March would have been done uh, in, on 10th February and they could have been saved. But that uh, decision was not taken and ultimately we lost all the seven people due to this error. So here this PowerPoint presentation as it is mentioned here. So this is also sometimes it is noted that the PowerPoint presentation has made a mistake. So it is, so we see here all the seven members. 
So she said, I am born in space and will die in space, said Kalpana Chawla in one of the interviews. Her love for space and mysterious planets was quite evident during her span of life. So the girl, so this is the, the girl who dreamt big. In her last email to the students of Punjab Engineering College, Kalpana wrote, the path from dreams to success does exist. May you have the vision to find it, the courage to get on it and perseverance to follow it. So shortly after her last mission, India renamed its first weather satellite Kalpana 1 in her honor. And she died a hero and a role model for many young women, particularly those her hometown of Karnal, where she periodically returned to encourage young girls to follow in her footsteps. Her brother Sanjay Chawla remarked, to me, my sister is not dead. She is immortal. Isn't that what this star is? She is a permanent star in the sky. She always, she will always be up there where she belongs. So Dr. Kalpana Chawla, an inspiration to young students. So I will go some more slides on her. So dedication and hard work. So Kalpana Chawla's journey from young girl in India to becoming the first Indian American woman astronaut, astronaut flying space is a testament to her dedication and hard work. And despite facing numerous challenges, is the source of inspiration for students who aspire to achieve their goals. So breaking the barriers. As the first woman of Indian origin to travel to space, Kalpana Chawla shattered gender and cultural barriers, as we have discussed earlier. Her achievements demonstrate that with passion and perseverance, anyone can overcome societal expectations and stereotypes and pursuit of knowledge. Her passion for knowledge and learning in is, in, is an inspiration for young students to excel in their studies and pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM fields. Space explorations. So, Kalpana Chawla's career as astronaut involved conducting scientific research in space, contributing to the advancement of human knowledge. Our involvement in space missions encourages young students to explore the cosmos and consider careers, space and space explorations. She did many experiments, like uh, if you uh, can discuss one of the mic, uh, the functioning in a microgravity or the experiments to done in to be done in a microgravity. As we know here uh, on Earth, the gravity is there. And the space, this gravity is very, gravitational pull is very less and reduced uh, uh, less than the Earth's gravitational pull. So there, how the uh, any experiment can be done, what are the effects of the plants growing there or seeds growing or biological cells, so those type, type of experiments you could do there. Leadership and teamwork, astronauts must demonstrate exceptional leadership skills and the ability to work collaboratively with international teams. So Kalpana Chawla's work on space mission highlights the importance of teamwork and effective communication, inspiring students to develop these skills. So teamwork and effective communication is very much required for if you are going, it's everywhere in society also. Perseverance and resilience. Chawla's journey was not without challenges but she continued and remained strong in the face of adversity. Our story teaches young students in the importance of resilience and maintaining a positive outlook, even when faced with setbacks. So as we have come through, gone through slides, there were many setbacks in her life from family side and other schools, colleges, but she overcome all these things with perseverance and resilience and uh, went to fulfill her dream. Legacy and memory. Kalpana Chawla tragically lost her life in Space Shuttle Columbia in 2003. Despite this, her legacy continues to inspire generations of young students worldwide. Her courage and passion for exploration are remembered and celebrated as an example of potential impact individuals can have on the world. So her life and achievements serve as an inspiration to young students by demonstrating the value of hard work, breaking barriers, 
pursuing knowledge, embracing the challenges, working towards a great purpose. So her story encourages young minds to dream big and reach for the stars in their own pursuits. It's now coming to a little bit connected with that India's women's contribution in space mission. So as we know, the missile woman of India, Tessie Thomas, she is called the missile woman of India. So long. Then uh, we have Dr. Ritu Karidhal Srivastava, the scientist at the helm of Chandrayaan 3 mission. She is called the rocket woman of India. And these are some of the uh, ISRO's women scientists, the Nandini Harinath, Maumita Datta, Ritu Karidhal, Anirwada TK, Binal Rohit, Mutaya Vanita, and we are Lalita Munika. So, India's first three women fighter flights, we know these are the first which were inducted in as a fighter pilots. They were Avani, Chaturvedi, Bhavana, Kanka, and Mohana Singh. And also, we have the Vijayalakshmi Ramanan. She was the first woman officer of the Indian Air Force, Wing Commander Vijayalakshmi Raman. And space missions for are crucial for India's. As we know, uh, we have space missions, uh, which is very much required for technological progress, national security, economic growth, environmental monitoring, global standing. So they contribute to the advancement of the science and technology, enhance our communication system, navigation capabilities, serve as a source of inspiration for future generations. So this technological progress, if you discuss, so if you uh, hear, so you are able to hear me from these long distances and it is broadcast throughout India and some other places also. So this has been possible due to these space missions. So we have satellites which is communicating and sending signals. We have mobile phones. And this, when you discuss about the national security, this is also very much required for our, so this we can relate to Cargill war. So how at that time this mission was very, thought of a very much important for the Cargill war. Then economic growth is uh, an environmental monitoring. So recently we have this uh, hurricane in the coast of Rajasthan, uh, Gujarat. Sometimes it comes in the Bay of Bengal and other places. So with the uh, information, prior information, we can control and take uh, precautions so that life and uh, benefits are not lost and global standing. So we know we are very much in the th third or fourth position in most of the space missions. So applications of space technology for the benefit of the common man. India today runs and maintains its space program and remarkable benefits are being provided to the common man in timely and cost-effective fashion. So this is the strengthening India's healthcare system with telemedicine. So within minutes, every information is communicated. We can have to district hospital, then through video conferencing, and uh, all the data can be connected, collected, panel doctors can discuss, and that can be done. So telemedicine importance has come. Then ISRO EduSet for education. So nowadays the villages are also connected with this EduSet system so that we can broadcast the lectures uh, throughout India or the world also so that it can teach the poor people. And nowadays also artificial intelligence for the disaster management, it has come. So if you see uh, collecting data through that, uh, and we can uh, simulate the different types and when, uh, what, like the weather forecasting or forest fires, and other things can be predicted and can be controlled. So this is our uh, ISRO, the, 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 we are the Chandrayaan-3, which was launched on 14th July 
this month. So India's Chandrayaan-3 third mission. We have the Vikram lunar lander. <coughs> this is the third mission. So if you say 40 days to the moon, the Chandrayaan-3 mission. So it will take around 40 days to land on the soft landing on the moon. So, but before this, America, China and Russia have done in four days, four days and some month. But why India is going to take 40 days? So that depends, means when you are uh, going to put a satellite on moon from this earth, directly, so you have to have a very much powerful uh, engine, so a lot of energy is required. But India is taking the benefit of having low energy and passing through this, it is giving. So initially it uh, put the Chandrayaan 3 in the low orbit, and within 15 to 60 minutes it was in the first orbit. Now it's going in that orbit, and when it comes to this place, the little bit energy is given so that it moves to the second and third, fourth, like fifth, uh, this circle, that is the elliptical orbit. And incidentally, today is the day when this uh, this will be put in the, towards the lunar transfer trajectory, this will and move towards the uh, <coughs> moon and it will evolve again. So this will again move in the reverse direction, it will slowly go and uh, in the lower orbit and land on the moon. So, India's daughter says in 1962 to 2000, Kalpana Separai Kalpana. So, Dr. Miss Kalpana Chawla's inspiring journey beyond the sky remains a testament to human ambition, courage, and the pursuit of knowledge. A life story epitomizes the possibilities that await those who are there to dream, work tirelessly, and embrace the unknown. As we gaze at the stars with it, Remember the extraordinary journey of Kalpana Chawla and the indelible marks he left on the cosmos and the hearts of billions around the world. Thank you. That's all from my side for this presentation. Hope I have made uh, succeeded in passing some information to the August uh, viewers of the CBSC family. Thank you so much, Professor Yadav, for enlightening us with your wonderful and knowledge and enriched presentation. I'm sure it will leave long lasting a positive impact on all of us. You have beautifully touched various aspects of the life of Dr. Kalpana Chawla, be it her childhood, her education, her struggle, challenges, her passion, her achievement, contribution to the world, and many more. This virtual gathering ko Dr. Kalpana Chawla ki vismakari uplabdiyo ko yaad karne ke liye bhi kare aur Dr. Kalpana Chawla ki pranatmak matra ko, unki nidarta ko aur dhrid sankar ki bhaavna ko vishnu ko nai uchai tak pahunchne ke liye prerit kare. Now, as we move towards the end of this webinar, I would like to request Dr. Sandeep Jain, Joint Secretary, to give vote of thanks. Dr. Sandeep Kumar Jain. धन्यवाद सुदेश सबसे पहले मैं आभार व्यक्त करना चाहूंगा प्रोफेसर एल यादव जी का जो कि आज के हमारे मुख्य वक्ता हैं और इन्होंने बड़े विस्तार से एक-एक बारीकी के साथ कल्पना चावला जी के जीवन पर प्रकाश डाला और किस तरह से हमारे शिक्षक साथी विद्यार्थी इससे लाभान्वित हो सकेंगे इस बारे में उन्होंने प्रकाश डाला धन्यवाद प्रोफेसर यादव जी अह मैं धन्यवाद देना चाहूंगा सीबीएसई प्लानिंग यूनिट के डायरेक्टर डॉक्टर रामशंकर जी का जिन्होंने इस प्रोग्राम की परिकल्पना की इस कार्यक्रम को लाइव स्ट्रीम करने के लिए आईटी सपोर्ट के लिए उस पूरे प्रोग्राम को एंकरिंग करने के लिए मैं आभार व्यक्त करता हूं सुदेश गुलिया जी का मैं आभारी हूं इस कार्यक्रम में कोऑर्गेनाइज करने के लिए मीनाक्षी डंका जो कि सहायक सचिव हैं केंद्रीय माध्यमिक शिक्षा बोर्ड की प्रशिक्षण इकाई में मैं आभार व्यक्त करता हूं हमारे सभी सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस के हेड की जो कि 17 सेंटर्स हैं हमारे 
और मैं आभार व्यक्त करता हूं सभी प्राचार्यों का सभी शिक्षकों का सभी डिस्ट्रिक्ट ट्रेनिंग कोऑर्डिनेटर्स का सभी मेंबर्स ऑफ हब्स ऑफ लर्निंग का जिन माध्यम से यह वेबिनार देश के अनेक अनेक व्यक्तियों तक पहुंची है उन्होंने इसका प्रचार प्रसार किया है टीम के सभी सदस्यों का पुनः धन्यवाद नमस्कार जय हिंद Thank you sir the webinar is over now